Hey guys, a new version of Inkscape, Inkscape 1.3 was just released and that's a perfect timing because I was planning on comparing Inkscape with Affinity Designer version 2. So that's what we're going to do today. This is the next video in this versus series. So we already compare uh, our Affinity Designer to Illustrator, we compare it to Corel Draw and now it's time for Inkscape. So I'm going to use a very, very similar framework like last time. I try to not change it too much between those different programs so we got a similar experience. Where do, did I take those questions, those features, tools from? Mostly from you guys, just picking them from comments, from your complaints. So don't blame me that I complaining about certain things in this video that's from your comments all right it's all on you so let's get started the first thing we need to talk about is a definitely a very important feature for affinity design and that's a pixel persona affinity designer is not a simply a alternative to adobe illustrator or inkscape it's two in one program. So we got a vector part of it, but also a little raster part. So there's whole pixel persona with raster tools, raster layer styles and stuff like that. So if you are illustrator that aim into more like mm, natural look, you wanna use natural textures like paper like stuff, I think you will be better off with this pixel persona thing. In this case, you don't need to move your illustration into like Photoshop or GIMP. You can start with vectors and then you can move to pixel persona to add your raster textures if you want. So that's definitely a huge win for Affinity Designer version two. But there is auto trace that everybody always complain about in Affinity Designer and this feature is built in in Inkscape. It's really good in Inkscape and some Affinity users, they install Inkscape only for this one feature. So if you are Inkscape user, you can auto trace as, as you want. You just click auto trace and you are done. On Affinity, there's no auto trace at all right now in version 2.1. Shape Builder tool, that's a hot topic. We've been waiting for this and it was finally added into version two of Affinity Designer, but the new version of Inkscape version 1.3 just received the same tool, Shape Builder tool. So let me just remind you, Shape Builder allows us to select certain shapes and instead of using those actions like subtract and add one by one, we can go for the shape builder like in Adobe Illustrator. This way we can set up like add action and just by dragging around, we can add elements we want to create a brand new shape. So it's available in both Designer and Inkscape and it's really, really decent. I like both shape builder tools. So that's a Neutral thing, both programs are really good in this. How about pricing? Normally I would <laughs> give a win to Adobe, sorry, Affinity Designer because Affinity Designer beat Corel Draw last time, it's beat Illustrator, but this time, this time we got a new winner here. As you know, Inkscape is free. That's open source software. We cannot beat that. <laughs> so that's a winner here. You can get an Inkscape for free. And for designer, you need to pay around $70. Keep in mind, that's one time purchase, no subscription involved. All right, the new addition, that's also new, pattern editor in version 2.1, just recently added. That's a really great addition. And we need to do some workarounds in Affinity Designer and do some symbols and stuff like that to enhance experience with surface design. And I think that was a really, really kind of awaited features. Many people nowadays, they are really into patterns and like print on demand, surface design. So I think this is really handy. That's the win for Inkscape. But designing for a print in general, it's way better in Affinity Designer. 
Why? Because we can set up some color modes for printing straight away in your document. We can add bleeds and margins in your artboards. We can create multiple artboards easily. We can have them in different sizes all in one document. So if you are designing for print, I think designer will be a better choice here. And this one, this point is really biased because it's really hard to say which user interface is better for you. It's very much depends on your previous experience, right? In my case, I really like the Affinity Designer interface, so I'm biased towards this one. In your case, it's going to be other way around. Maybe you hate it, those like personas that you need to switch between and stuff like that. In my case, I really like this interface and it's a winner for me again. So just keep in mind, I'm biased on this one. Don't trust me on this one. If you are a Linux user, you have no other choice by, but to pick Inkscape. I don't imagine like people that want to do a graphic design, they will pick a Linux as the operating system. It's more like if you are doing software or stuff like that, software development, and you need to make some small adjustments in SVG files, that can be your program. You don't need to emulate anything. You just can install a native Linux experience. So that's definitely a win for Inkscape this time. How about tutorials? If you want to use a new graphic software, you need to learn how to use it. And while you are using it, you want to learn about new updates, new tools. So we need a source of that. Nowadays, it's way better. We got so many tutorials for Affinity Designer and Inkscape as well on YouTube. So I will give it a neutral, nobody's winner here. We got many tutorials available right now. So that's a win for both. If you are iPad user, you will go with Affinity Designer. An iPad version of the program is available and it's really good one. It's like 99% of the same features from the desktop version. So they were, they were even ahead of Adobe in this case, like they really developed solid iPad version. And I also mentioned Mac last time with Corel Draw. In this case, I erase that because a new version of Inkscape is really good on Mac. That was a surprise for me. I'm a Mac user myself and I got the troubles with that. So I got this uh, Mac with the uh, Apple Silicon and I first tried to use Inkscape on this Mac. I got really terrible performance with that, let's say. So I kind of stopped using Inkscape for a while on my Mac and then they fix all of that and they develop a native app for Apple Silicon Max and it runs smooth. So I say on the Mac, it's good experience for both, but for iPad, for iPad, you need to buy Affinity Designer. All right, let's talk about distributions. If you got multiple elements on your canvas and you wanna distribute them, you will be better with Inkscape. As you can see, we got so many options here for distribution. And in Affinity Designer, they improve on that a bit, but it's not that great. Take a look. Let me open the alignment panel. It's way smaller here, all right? So for distribution, I think Inkscape is still a better thing. But we cannot forget about a family, right? So <laughs> keep in mind, Inkscape is more like standalone open source software. Many people use it together with GIMP or GIMP, but by design is standalone software, but in case of Affinity Designer, that's just part of a family. So there is Affinity Photo, like Photoshop, Affinity Designer, this vector editor we're talking about today, and also Affinity Publisher. And that's like uh, for DTP, for multi-page documents, like in design a bit. And they can cross open each other files. So if you are working in Affinity Designer, and out of the sudden you need to do some serious photo editing in that document, you can just open that file in Affinity Photo and you got all of like the tools for raster editing like in Photoshop. And then you can save it and open back in Designer. Or maybe you discover that you need to expand your project 
First you plan for just four pages, so you start designing a file, but then they told you you need 10 more pages. So you decide to reopen your project in Affinity Publisher and continue there. So you can do that. Affinity Design is part of the family and it's really, really working really well. So in this case, Designer is a winner. All right, so here it is for you guys. I know I didn't cover everything. I mostly just cover stuff you complain about in comment section again and again. There are other things we can talk about, so feel free to mention those things in the comment section like last time. Just <laughs> keep it civil, all right? So, family, that's for Affinity Designer distribution tools better in Inkscape. iPad version, that's win for Affinity Designer. Tutorials and learning materials are available for both. Linux version, that's a win for Inkscape. User interface, that's my bias win for Affinity Designer. If you're designing for print, go with Affinity Designer. If you're doing some patterns, vector patterns and surface design, uh, Inkscape is even better than before now with this version 1.3. If you're looking at the price tag only, that's clear win for Inkscape, that's totally free software. Shape Builder tool is now available in both programs, so that's a win for both. If you auto trace a lot, you start your project as a bitmap, and then auto trace, you need to use Inkscape. There's no auto trace at all in Designer. And if you are mixing vector style with pixel style in your projects, you should use Pixel Persona in Affinity Designer. So here it is. I hope this video was helpful and will make help you to make your own educated decisions. All right. I hope you will also check the previous one. The previous one was all about Affinity Designer versus Core Draw, so you can check this as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.